In this video, I'm looking at another analogic example. Um, I'm looking at a simple conveyor line example with a workstation. We looked at this in a previous video. Um, I have a source that generates custom box agents, which are transported along this conveyor line until this position is reached. Uh, then there is a conveyor spur. 50% is routed uh, straight ahead and 50% is going down alongside this conveyor. This conveyor has a workstation with a batch size 5 and a processing time 15. The process starts once the full batch is in place. Um, and the workstation does have simultaneous loading and unloading. Um, I already demonstrated this example in a previous video. This was without resources. And in this example, I want to add um, assembly workers to this workstation and thereby I want to simulate the requirement of having workers assemble um, the five boxes into some kind of product. Um, for this I add a resource pool to the model and this resource pool uh, has uh, resource units. I want to add a um, custom type for my assembly workers. I'm going to call it assembly workers. So these, these are my assembly agents. Uh, I probably already created something like this before, so I'm going to create another class here called, well, let, let me just call it assemb assemblers. I call it assemblers. I click next. Um, I can uh, choose between various uh, predefined 3D models. Yeah, I choose the worker. Click next, I could be adding parameters. I'm not going to do this in this example. I click finish um, and I have now created a new class for a custom resource agent type um, um, named assemblers. I can also be adding the or adjusting the scaling. In this case, I'm going to be adjusting it to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to set to 300%. I'm going to go back to my main model, my resource pool. Um, it's now associated with this assembler um, agent type um, and yeah, they need a home location. So this home location um, is going to be where they are actually going to be fulfilling their tasks. Uh, for this I need a node, a rectangular node, which I'm going to be adding uh, as an area. Uh, next to the assembly station. I'm going to add a tractor, so <clears throat> I want to have three people conducting assembly work, so I'm going to add three attractors uh, with uh, uh, some uh, defined space between them. No, I'm just adding three attractors, yeah, and uh, now I'm going to relocate them manually. First I'm going to adjust the orientation. And um, now I have these three locations where assembly workers are going to be conducting assembly work. And this node uh, is going to be applied to the assemblers. I can now go back to my resource pool and I have to um, select the home location. I'm going to choose the node for that I created up here. Um, and now I'm going to click on the workstation. Um, there's a section called resources. I can now say use resources. And I need resources from a specific pool. It's going to be the resource pool that I added, and I need three units. <clears throat> and now we can look 
Ja, ist immer das Run. So currently the model is not running because I only have one worker and I need three workers to execute the process. Let's go back to our resource pool and um, let's increase the capacity. So until now I only had three workers. I'm going to increase the capacity to three. And now let's see uh, what the model does. Waiting for the model to load. I sometimes have issues with Chromecast. Here the model is coming. Now I have three workers at the workstation and let's look at uh, how the model performs now. So now they will be able to execute their work and you can also get some statistics here on their resource utilization. Um, and you can also use shift calendars, uh, work schedules, all, kind of, all these kinds of things can be modeled with any logic, uh, which is something we can look at in, in, in future videos. This was just one um, simple example showing how you can apply a resource pool to simulate assembly workers at a workstation connected to a uh, conveyor line.